I got a couple of blanks here. One of them is a thin blue line, and the other one is a thin red line blank. And I have a couple of nice 3 8 inch bolt action kits. I thought it would be fun to go ahead and mate these blanks to these kits. I'm gonna start by finding the center of both blanks. I'll repeat that for the thin red line blank and meet you at the drill press. I've checked up a 3 8 inch bit. This blank is short enough that we're just going to go ahead and drill through the entire blank. On the thin red line blank, we will find the distance of the tube on our bit. We'll mark it with a piece of tape and we'll drill till we hit that tape flag. We're just going to take our tube and we're going to lay it next to our drill bit, leaving a little bit of the bit passing through the bottom of the blank. I'll take my tape and we'll just make a little flag right on the bit. And now we're ready to drill. With the blank drilled for the tube, let's go ahead and mark the length of the tube on our blank so that we can cut it. And if you take a look, you'll notice if I put this right against the mark I made, take a look on the opposite side how much distance there is. About an eighth of an inch. That's really all you need. We got lucky with this blank that we did not blow out the end of it, but that can very well happen whenever you're uh, drilling a blank that's already cut to the proper size. This is my preferred method to avoid that situation. I wanted to show you that drilling the blank first and then cutting it off yields a much nicer blank with a perfect entry and exit hole. You can see where the bit just passed through the top section and you can see it's kind of a, it's kind of dished out because the bit that I used was more of a of a wood style bit without a point. But um, I drilled right through. We were able to cut that off. We've got a perfect entry and exit hole. I've got my tubes sanded up. They've got the Play-Doh plugs in them. We're ready to mix our epoxy up and get these tubes into our blanks. Want to make sure you get your epoxy all the way down to the very end of your blank. And the other thing I'm going to do, this is the end where I drew my, my center dot. I'm going to enter the blank from the other end. And the reason why, being that this is the entry hole, uh, I pulled the bit out of the blank several times in an effort to clear the chips. And when you do that, you conceivably can enlarge the hole just a tiny bit. So by inserting the tube at the other end of the blank, um, I guarantee that this hole down here is, is very tight, uh, going to fit very tight around the uh, tube. And I also can guarantee that um, if there is a little bit of slop, it will get sanded off when I take this to my disc sander. Blanks have been sanded and micro meshed, and I'm ready to add just a little bit of wax, and then we're going to buff them. Take a look at these blanks. Aren't they beautiful?
I'm ready to start pressing these blanks into kits, but what I want to do first is my bolt, I think it's pointing the wrong way because the bolt, when it goes forward and locks on a rifle would normally be down. So I'm going to correct that. And the way to do that is with a Phillips screwdriver. And there's a little screw inside of here and we can just break it loose. It'll allow us to turn the bolt. Let me turn it one more turn loose there. There we go. Now when the bolt goes forward and locks, it looks more like a rifle would look. Let me tighten her back down. All right, that looks good. I'll do the other one very quickly. You don't want to loosen it too much because if you do, then all the components start to come loose and you got to kind of fight getting all those put back together. Okay, that should be nice. And once again, that one locks. Now the clip is in the way. The clip should be on the back side. So I'm going to loosen up the end of this pin, what we would call the primer, and we should be able to rotate the pin or the clip around to the back side. There we go. And there we go. To me, that looks a little more natural. Uh, I Some people argue that it doesn't, but I like it and that's the way I'm gonna build my pins today. I'm gonna to start with the thin red line and we'll get rid of one of the bushings here. We're gonna take the back of the pin or the cap section of the pin and I'm gonna just temporarily seat that. And I'm gonna to try to make sure that clip falls right about in the center of the red lines. Looks like I've got it and press her into place. Gonna grab the nib section, we'll start it. Line everything up. There we go. The initial start always makes me nervous because if you start at any type of an angle, there's a good chance you're going to split your blank. That looks really nice. I like that. Go ahead and remove the rose nib here. We'll take our spring and put it on our refill. Drop that refill into the pin body and then reattach the nib. And go ahead and pull that little ball off the end of there because it's keeping me from ejecting nicely. That is really nice. That's gonna look good. That's gonna look really good laying on somebody's desk or in their pocket. Let me set this one out of the way. Let's go ahead and assemble the thin blue line pin. Once again, I'm going to try to kind of roughly line, align the clip. Okay. Nice thin blue line pin now. That makes for a really nice looking set of pins. I'm very happy with how these turned out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I've got a couple of great looking pins here that I think anybody in the firefighting or police arena would love to have in their pocket and to show off to their friends. Thank you guys for joining me today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.